Good morning. We welcome you to our Easter service at Church of the Living God. Thank you for joining us. Uh, also, all across the social media platforms that you're on, Facebook, YouTube, or whatever platform that you're on, thank you for being here. If you will go ahead and hit that share button so people on your list can enjoy this service as well, we would appreciate that. I'm Mike Smith, the executive pastor at Church of the Living God, and we are going to do both of them. We're going to celebrate communion today and the resurrection because without a death, there would be no resurrection. And I want to start off with some scripture, some of my favorite scripture found in the book of Matthew in chapter 28, verses 5 and 6. It says, And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not. It's amazing how many times over the last few weeks, scriptures that we have given have come up with, Fear not. Don't fear today. We know what the pandemic is doing. We know what they're saying is going on, but don't fear. Keep your trust in God. The angel told the women, fear not, for I know that ye seek Jesus who was crucified. And here's the best part. He is not here. Hallelujah. For he is risen as he said. Come and come see the place where the Lord laid. Can I tell you of all the religions in the world, Christianity is the only one that can be taken to an empty tomb and their Savior is not there. All the other ones are buried and gone, but Jesus Christ is risen at the right hand of God the Father. We hope you were able to come by and get your elements yesterday to uh, uh, join us in communion. If not, get you some uh, bread and a little bit of grape juice and you can join us. But let's ask the Lord to touch this place and your place today. And Father, we do that right now. Father, we just ask you to come into this house. Lord, there's but a few of us here, but we ask you to come into this place, Heavenly Father. We ask you to come into each and every bedroom and every living room and every kitchen. Maybe people are listening from the jailhouse. Father, we ask you to visit that jail cell. Father, we ask you to visit the governor's mansion should the governor be listening. Father, we ask you to come in every place that's under the sound of my voice. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house. Have your way in that place today. Father, let us know, and we want you to know that we are thankful we serve the living Christ. God, we ask you for the anointing, the utterance of your spirit all across this region. Let your spirit be poured out on this Easter Sunday. And God, we will give you the praise for it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship him this morning. Amen, amen. So good to be in his presence today on this very special day. And just so good to be um, able to lift up the name. You know, there's a lot of things right now that we're not able to do that we're used to doing. But we certainly can lift up the name above all names today. We certainly can begin to vocalize and verbalize what a good God He is. Amen. And what a Savior He has been to us. Hallelujah. We're going to lift the name of Jesus high in this building today and in this community. And most of all in our hearts, we just want to put Him on the throne right now. Let nothing else let nothing else take precedence right now in my life but you, Jesus Christ. For you are worthy of all that I could ever give you, all that I could ever serve, all that I could ever praise you. God, you are worthy. So we lift you up. Jesus, Jesus, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Somebody just say, blessed be the Lord God. And blessed be his name, oh, forevermore. Glory, glory.
Jesus Messiah, the name above all names. Yes, you are the blessed Redeemer. Oh, He's in me.
so glad I know He holds my future. My life is worth living right now because He lives. Father, we give you all the praise today. And we thank you for your gift. Thank you for your gift, Lord. You gave life. You gave life abundantly, Lord. Only you could do it. So we pray. Amen. Are you grateful this morning that he holds our future? Amen. In these uncertain times, it's so easy for us to focus on what we see and hear and what we're inundated with. But I think as we take communion this morning, we need to remind ourselves that Christ, going into Good Friday, Christ, he, he didn't know entirely what was ahead of him. Things were uncertain. The people didn't know. The disciples didn't know. Jesus knew that there was a plan. He knew that his Father was in control. But even he had to believe. Even he had to have faith. Because remember, he asked, if there's any other way, let this cup pass. And so going into this way, this only way, Jesus had to have faith. He had to trust that this was under his Father's control. And so we have to as well. And we're fortunate this morning to be able to take communion together over Facebook and as always, you don't have to be a member of our house to take communion with us. You can uh, just be a believer in the body of Christ, and you can take communion with us. And if you have some grape juice or whatever juice you've got and a little cracker, that'll be enough. Amen? And uh, these, these elements are not holy. It's the act that's holy. And so we're going we're gonna to read some scripture real quick, and we're going to take this communion together. Uh, if you would, let's take the bread in our hand first. We're going to read from Matthew 26, verse 19. It says, and the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. The apostle Paul to the Corinthian church said, he said in the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it, he broke it. And he, said, he said, this is my body, eat, eat it all. Eat all of it. This is the body in the new covenant. It was this body that lived 33 and a half years without sin. It was this body who died daily. His death on the cross was not the first death he'd experienced to himself. But he died daily for 33 and a half years to himself to obey his father. To do as he saw the father do and to say what the father had him say. And so this body has power. It's not just the blood of Jesus. It's the body and the blood of Jesus. Without the body, the blood is not qualified. But it was that perfect life through this perfect body. So let's take this bread in our hands and let's ask God to bless it. Father, we thank you so much for your plan, Lord. That was from the foundations of the world. Jesus, we thank you for your obedience. Because without that obedience, every day, there would be no power in your body or your blood. But you obeyed every day. You did what we cannot do. You lived a perfect life. You attained something that we will never attain. But when you did, you turned around and you said, here, you can have what is mine. You can have what I've done. You can apply it to you. And God, today, we humbly and gratefully apply this body to our bodies. We ask you, Jesus, that its full work would become part of us, body, soul, and spirit, God, that you would atone us, that your healing would be upon us. God, that, that the chastisement for our peace would be upon us. God, you took the chastisement, but we get the peace. God, we ask that you would let it be in us and on us. In Jesus' name, we humbly and gratefully receive it. Amen. You may take the bread. Take your cup. 
Verse 27 of the same chapter says, Jesus took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He said, Drink all of it because he was about to pour it all out. And he did pour it all out. But then he makes a statement in verse 28. This is the blood of the New Testament. This, this seals the deal. This finalizes the agreement between God and man. And it says it was shed for many for the remission of sins. Friend, he did not die so that you may live in your sin. He did not die so that we may be overtaken by our sin. That sin may have its way with us. No, he died that our sins may be remitted. That they may go into remission. Just like when cancer is gone from a body, sin can be gone from a life because of the blood of Jesus. And right now, Father, we offer thanks again for this blood. It was your plan. And Jesus, it was your obedience that made this blood holy and precious and spotless. And it's this blood alone. There is no other way. There's no other door. There's no other name that we may come back to our Father except through you and yours. And Jesus, we take this blood into our being today. Gratefully, humbly, because we do not deserve it. But God, for some reason, you wanted man to be part of your family again. And Lord, we we come back in the name of Jesus and we take that blood into our being in Jesus' name. We take on that New Testament, that new agreement, God, that sin no longer has lordship over us. But sin is remitted in the name of Jesus. Sin is finished in us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it. You may take the cup. What's been done is done, friend. Jesus said on the cross, it's finished. It's finished. He won't ever have to go that way again. Amen. Sin now is optional for us. We have a new covenant and a new hope, and it lasts forever. It lasts forever. So let's sing and worship about this forever agreement that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Worship team, let's sing again.
sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Cause the Lamb has overcome. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we know the Lamb has overcome, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, we sing hallelujah, the Lamb has overcome. Father, we worship you right now. Come on, wherever you're at, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Father, we declare and thank you that you are alone, God of this universe, that Jesus Christ is your Son and the Holy Ghost is our comfort. You can be alive right now just like Christ is alive. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm sorry for my sins. You don't have to list them all out. You don't have to remember them all, but just be sorry for your sins and invite him into your heart right now. And just like Christ is alive, you can be renewed and restored as our mission statement is for this church. We give you praise. Come on, one more time. Lift your hands. Father, we bless you and we thank you and we give you glory. We do. We sing hallelujah. We sing hallelujah across this region. We give you praise, Father, and we worship you in this place. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I hope that you can sense the presence of God wherever you're at, just like we do in this sanctuary. Even though there's a limited number of people in this place, God is in this house, and he's where you're at. He is where you're at. I don't care. Listen, I don't care if you're in the drug house. I don't care if you're a prostitute in a house of ill repute. God is right where you're at. And I believe you sense his presence right now. And I just encourage you to give your life to him. It's not hard. Listen, there's people that are monitoring this feed. We have administrators monitoring this feed. If you want to know Jesus, they'll lead you to Jesus right over the Facebook, right over YouTube. Just say, I need him. I need him. And they'll, they'll lead you in a prayer right over Facebook. Right over Facebook because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's not whether we're gathering together or not gathering together necessarily. And I'm telling you what, church, we miss it. This whole team behind me, the pastoral staff, we miss it, we're, but we're gonna get back together soon. But you hang in there, you keep joining us on Facebook and on YouTube, but come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus, there's no better way to celebrate the risen Christ 
than accepting him into your life right now. Father, we give you praise for your presence. Thank you, praise team. Thank you for bringing us into the very presence of our God. Almighty God, the Bible calls his name Jehovah. <laughs> and he only has one son, that's Jesus Christ. And he loves you today. He so loves you today. Thank you for being a part of virtual church today. I, I just, like I said, I hope you can sense the presence of God where you're at because he is here, and we thank God for that. And we thank you for your faithfulness. Let me talk to our home folks for just a minute and those friends that attend here. We thank you for your faithfulness and your tithe paying and your almsgiving. Please know that even though we're not meeting together as a family yet, and Lord, I just pray it sooner than later, just know that monthly obligations continue to come and that your tithes and your offerings, they take care of those monthly obligations. And we've got three different ways that you can do that. Of course, you can drop them by the church. Now, the church is officially closed except for Mondays. We're open from 9 a.m. until 2.30 p.m. We invite you, if it's better for you, to drop your tithe and offering by the church. Do that on Mondays. Uh, Connie Curtis, our church secretary, is here. She'll receive that for you. Or you can mail it into the church at 114 Franklin Avenue in Winchester, 40391. The fastest and easiest way is simply to text seven, uh, text Win City to 77977. It's simple. Text Win City to 77977. It'll give a place where you, the amount you want to give, if you want to do it one time or reoccurring and take all that information. But that is the fastest way. But please know, we don't take that for granted. We don't take the fact that you pay your tithe and you give your offerings. And you that are listening that you don't attend this church, uh, if you feel led to give, we're not going to keep you from doing that simply because it's an act of worship. And we would not keep you from worshiping God. So if you want to do that, feel free to do that as well. One of those three different ways. And I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I'm charged. It, Pastor Hall is going to come to the pulpit right now and give you the word of God. God bless you today. Well, it is certainly good for us today to uh, come together and worship and pray and call upon the name of the Lord, hear the word of God. We're praying for the congregation. We're praying for our city, our state. Uh, our nation is in such a time of turmoil and a, a challenging, challenging time. Sometimes, you know, when things get tough, people begin to look up. And I think that's a good thing. Uh, you know, if, if hard times don't move us, then what will it take to move us? And so we want to uh, be aware, you know, of what God is doing. And I've, I've been saying, been praying, you know, for a, a while now that it seemed that things uh, were kind of running ru routine in a lot of ways and, and things. But, you know, this gospel is renewed day by day. Our salvation, our sins are washed away, our name in the book of life. All of these things are so beyond this world. And so we're a part of something that this world pales in comparison to what God has planned for us. I was thinking as they were singing and, and just thought about how that God took spotted people and he took their spots and put their spots on his spotless son. And so there was an exchange that came that, that he gave us the opportunity to be without spot because that Jesus was able to bring redemption to pay the price for our sins. And I'm so, so grateful for that. I love the gospel. I love, I love the church. I'm so grateful that God brought me into the house of God at an early age. And I tell you, God's been good to me. Now, I've been around long enough to know that people are people. Church people are people. And people you work with are people. Everybody's people. And we're going to be that way sometimes. You're going to see that. Nobody's perfect, but we're on a journey. And we're on a journey of grace and uh, are grateful for what God has done and what He is doing. And so uh, pray for one another and encourage uh, one another and just uh, let's work together to see what God is going to do. I promise you that God is going to do something bigger than what the enemy has been able to do. And so I know that that is true. The Lord uh, prompted my spirit today for uh, Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to read verses uh, 1 
uh, 12, 1, uh, 2, and 3. And look at this. It's a, it's a great message, and I uh, just ask God to help me preach it and so that it will be a blessing to you. And the message entitled is Life Renewed, Hope Restored. Life Renewed and Hope Restored. Father, I thank you for the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, for the promise of the kingdom of God, the salvation that Jesus Christ was able to pay for our sins, that we could be redeemed and owe nothing. God, that you have taken us away from our sins and taken our sins away from us. And God, I just thank you for it. I pray, Lord, for new Christians. I pray, Father, for people that have served you for 50 and 60 years. Lord, let it not be routine. Let it not be mundane, but let us stir up ourselves and do that on purpose, to stir up ourselves, uh, because this is as good a gospel today as it was the day that I knelt at that altar and accepted Jesus Christ. And Lord, I thank you for that. And I just pray that you will move us, that the church and in all of the denominations and all of the uh, places in America and even around the world, that where churches have become routine and mundane, God, stir us a revival and, and bring us back into the awareness and the, of the beauty of all that you have done for us. Bless these people, Lord, as they watch, as they listen minister to their needs, touch their bodies, encourage their spirits, and God glorify your name among us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The message this morning again is life renewed, hope restored. We need this in America. Uh, again, from the church house to the courthouse, to the jail house, <laughs> to your neighbor's house, to your house. We need that. We need a stirring. We need a freshness. We need to embrace this amazing thing that God has done for us, that he would write our name in the book of life and that he would receive us as sons and daughters of the King of Kings. This is the best news in all the world for all time. And it is this, this message of renewal and re restoration. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. And so as we look at that, we see that this walk with God, our faith life, is not separate from a physical life. Our faith life is intertwined with our physical life. And our physical life is intertwined with our spiritual life as well. He says, I beseech you, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. He didn't say that you just do give a mental assent. He didn't say that you just try to fix, figure out one or two uh, things that seem to be profound and see if you can do that. But that we may present our bodies a living sacrifice. That's day by day. How do we as Christians present our bodies as a living sacrifice? Notice he doesn't give us or ask us to present our bodies as a, a, death, a thing of death, a thing of a sacrifice. We know Jesus, you know, when he was crucified, his body was crucified, uh, but also he carried the sins of the world. But we don't have to do that. We don't have to carry that. We are able, and by the mercies of God, that we are able to present to Him our bodies as a living sacrifice. Our bodies do not dictate to us who we serve, but we make that choice within our spirit and within our soul, and we make that choice, and our bodies come with us as we give our, ourself to God, the body, soul, and the spirit. And so He says, 
to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He didn't say this was a, uh, a, you know, just a far out thing. You know, this is just something so great that you can't imagine it. He said that as we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, that this is our reasonable service. The word reasonable there in the Greek also could have been defined as logical. That kind of threw me for a minute. I thought, wait a minute, that, I didn't expect that definition. This reasonable, this definition, logical, and it's also rational. Isn't that amazing? God didn't say, I'm going to throw this cosmic plan out there that you, you can barely even comprehend it, and I expect you to walk well in your life with that. He didn't do that. He said, I have called you to present your body as a living sacrifice and, and the, a sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto God. And that is your reasonable, logical, rational service. What he, after what he has done for us, it is reasonable. It is logical. Amen. That we would give back to God the life that he took from his son and gave to us that we give that life back to him and serve him every day of our lives and just follow all that he has for us. I'm talking about life renewed and hope restored. Amen. The saving grace of God is greater than all of our sin. And so we are grateful to know that God is in the business of renewing and restoring. In verse 2, he says this, Romans 12, 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I like this verse. It's, it's got a little depth to it, but I, I, I like it. He has just told us that what God has done for us by the mercies of God that we could come and give our bodies a living sacrifice to God and that God would receive our bodies as a reasonable service and a logical thing to do. For what He's done for us, it's reasonable for us to commit our life back to Him. And He says, not only uh, reasonable and logical, uh, but also it was our body. He wants our body, soul, and our spirit. And that includes our worship, by the way. And so be not conformed to this world. Uh, that word conformed there in the Greek, another definition for that is uh, do not be in the same pattern. Do not be, be not conformed to this world. Do not Form, do not create, do not shape, do not mold your life to be conformed to this world. See, see, this world is not our home. Amen? We're only passing through. God has saved us. He has put our name in the book of life. He is anticipating our arrival at some time in His kingdom. And He's preparing for us. Amen. Jesus said, I'm going to go and I'm going to prepare a place for you. And so this is intentional. And as much as it is intentional for God to prepare a place for us, it is intentional for us to prepare a place for God to come right on into our life and into our spirit. Yes, it will affect your body, your soul, your mind, your spirit, everything that is about you. And so we are not to be conformed to this world. You know what? It'd be, it's difficult to conform to the world because they do this for a little while and then it runs dry. And then they'll pick up something else and they'll go another direction and it runs dry sooner or later. And it just satisfies for a small period of time. I mean, it would be a hard thing to do to try to keep up with what the world is into these days. <laughs> But what is in our lives and in our hearts by the gift of Jesus Christ, by His cross, by His resurrection, this, 
this is, uh, this is something that is stable. It is something that is consistent. It's something that uh, we can conform into that pattern uh, in this world. While we're living in this world, that we are actually conforming to the kingdom of God. And so he says, be ye transformed. Again, the definition to transfer, another word for that also is metamorphosis. So God knows he's going to do a metamorphosis. Uh, and so he's doing something scientific, you know. And so he's, God's the creator of science anyway. And so he says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now listen, these eras, these days that we are in right now, people could choose a lot of fear. People could choose a lot of weight, a lot of sadness, and, and these things that may would just keep our mind filled with the pain and with the hardship that is going on in the world today. But, but when we are within the kingdom of God, we have the opportunity to renew our mind by going to a higher position. It's a higher place. Uh, you see, this isn't in heaven. You know, there's not all of this infection. There's not all of these things that are going on. It's not in heaven. And that, so we begin to walk in that higher place and know that God is with us and that we're going to be all right because God is faithful. And that when our mind gets weighed down, that we can step out intentionally and begin to renew our mind and put our mind upon the things of God, and put our mind upon what God has already done. I don't know about you, but one of the greatest ways I just like to shift gears is to just go back and visit the past for just a little while and remember what God has done for me throughout my life. I'm telling you, He's done more for me than I ever could have asked. I wouldn't have dared to ask God to do the things that he has done. And he has just blessed beyond measure. And even though the times are wearisome and, and that we don't know exactly all that's how and when and all those things that's going to be, we still know who. We still know who the who is. And that who is God himself, Jehovah God. And so we renew our mind around this that you may prove, that word prove is to test. What is that good? That's one. And what is that acceptable, right? And then the third thing is perfect will of God. God's will is so perfect, it took several, several words to get it out, right? That you may prove or test what is that good, that acceptable and agreeable and the perfect will of God. And so God is doing something in our lives. So I was saying that many times the way that I, I, I begin to move up again in the things of God is to remember what God has already done. And you know, if only given his son Jesus, if that was all that he had done, it's enough to serve him for eternity. But he's added to that. He gave us salvation plus. He gave us redemption plus. He gives us some joy to live in. And He gives us some hope to live in. Amen. He renews us over and over again. And so that we may prove or test what is the good, acceptable, uh, the good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. And man, if you can find that place, even the journey toward it, it already begins to lift you up. Amen. That when you find that place, that you're in the perfect will of God. And so just a thought that uh, the Holy Spirit had brought to me was that there is a transformation process for those who surrender that of the flesh and exchange the flesh for the process. Exchange that which is of the flesh and exchange it for the process. Many people fall away from God because they want quick 
results. They want instant uh, resolution to everything. They spend 25, 30 years in the world and they want God to fix them in two days. You know, but this is a journey and this is a process and God is a big part of that. So we need to have a trust in Him that not only is He going to do these things in our lives, but that He's going to do it at the best way and in the best time. That is according to His will and to where we are. I'm glad that God doesn't put more on us than we can bear. And that's not always bad things. You know, you, you could get more good stuff than you could keep up with. <laughs> and it would be wearisome a little bit, but at least it'd be good, right? But this transformation process for those that surrender that of the flesh. God, I give you my worry. I give you my concern. Amen. I'm praying. I'm praying for the, the governor. I'm praying for the president. I'm praying for our city officials. I'm praying for people that are uh, on, on the mark, you know, where there's tragedy and pain and they're going in. They're going into those apartments. They're going into that car wreck. They don't know who's there, what they're going through, but they're there. We need to remember them. But this process of transformation, if we can see it through, if we cannot demand of God to fix us in 30 minutes, but say to God, I'm going to, I'm going to pursue you for the rest of my life. I'm going to pursue you for the rest of my life. And in that journey, God, I just want to get plugged in and stay plugged in to the process that you're, you already began in me. And so that's what we need to do. There are millions of people that need to go back to church. Amen. America has gotten very soft in church attendance, very soft in being engaged in the services and, and things. We need to stir up the gifts that are within us. And we need to walk uh, as somebody that's been transformed from this world into the plan of God. God's eternal purpose will bring it to pass in each and every one of our lives. Verse 3, he says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, this is Romans 12, 3, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to, to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Look at that. Amen. This is awesome. Through the grace given unto me, he said, I'm going to say this, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man, to everybody that's hearing it, everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Amen. I've said for many, many years that you've got two positions in this world, and that is to be humbled and that is to be uplifted. And so uh, if we will humble ourselves, then God will exalt us. There's an exaltation for God's people. But if we exalt ourselves, if we humble ourselves, God will exalt us. But if we exalt ourselves, God will humble us. Amen? And so that is, uh, sometimes we need that. And so uh, he says, think, of, think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. People say, well, I just don't have any faith. That's not true. That's not true. Well, I've never been a person of faith. That's not true. God has given to every man a measure, the measure of faith. Now, the devil may be telling you you have no faith. Your disappointment within your own life may be telling you that you, uh, you know, don't have enough faith. But brother and sister, God has allotted us uh, the measure of faith. And so we can't say, well, I just didn't get any faith. You may have rejected it. You may, maybe you didn't absorb it. Maybe you pushed it away. Maybe some, something happened. I don't know. But I know this, that God 
according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. And so the devil wants to say, well, God skipped you over. You don't have a measure of faith. The devil's a liar. Do you know that Jesus said that the devil is a liar? As a matter of fact, he said, Jesus said that there is no truth in the devil. No truth. Now listen, I've met some liars in this world. But I don't know that I've met, eh, maybe one or two. I don't know if I've met somebody that was just all a lie. Just everything about them was a lie. And so God has given to every man the measure of faith. When your mind tells you you don't have any faith, you need to give it that scripture. Romans 12, 3, mark it down. When somebody says, oh, no, I don't have any faith. Now, you know, I just don't have any faith at all. So what would what, you do with it? What, why is it that you don't have any faith? God gave you a measure of faith. Amen. And if God gave you a measure of faith, He def definitely didn't give it to you for you to just ignore it. He's given it to you that it may grow within you. That, that faith, that we can go from faith to faith. Amen. We've been through real life. Serve the Lord all of our lives. But we've been through real life. We've been through heartbreaking times. And all these things that are, are real upon the earth. They're real. Even as we're doing this service, I'm getting ready to go to a cemetery for my sister. And so, you know, it's just amazing that things happen in this world and it just kind of get you off step for just a little bit. But you know what? Why don't you accept what the Bible says? Why don't you accept? Paul is writing this to the Romans. Paul used to kill Christians. He blasphemed the name of Christ. But God got a hold of him. Knocked him right off that horse. And, he, and I can just see Saul saying, I saw the light. <laughs> Because it changed his life. And so God's given us a measure of faith. Let's put it to work. Saints, get back in the house of God. Amen. When we're worshiping, get those hands up in the air. When we're praying for people, lay hands on one another. Let's get back to the house of God and let's be active. And let's be moving in the power of God. These days will change again. The doors will open at some time. And we will be invited back into our houses and what we've done with a very small group of people and they're working very hard for us is to just give you a nugget, just give you some word, just remind you of what God is and what He's done. Brother and sister, God has already invested in you such a great thing of His kingdom. So let's live in it. Let's walk in it. I made a little statement uh, to close out with. And I, the Spirit helped me with this. It said, as we humble our estimation of who we are in the natural, it is the transformation from the earthly into that which is spiritual. And that for the glory of God and the kingdom of Christ. I'm going to say that again. As we humble our estimation of who we are in this world, in the natural. It is the transformation from the earthly into that which is spiritual. And that transformation is for the glory of God and for the glory of the kingdom of Christ. All that we can ever hope to accomplish is to bring glory to His kingdom. To our Father, to our brother, and to the kingdom of God. Amen. Life renewed. Hope restored. Embrace it. Embrace it. If somebody tries to encourage you, thank them for it. Embrace that encouragement. And we can do that and get in the Word and just highlight those things that are encouraging your spirit. In times like these, the greatest place you can be in is in the presence of the Lord. 
Amen. Father, we thank you today. And we praise you today. And we honor you today. We thank you, Lord, because that you are moving in our homes, in our cities, our states, our nation. Father, there are many, many people that are working against all odds, but they're saving lives. And we thank you for that. And Father, we just pray that you would just come and breathe a new wind in a new direction upon this nation and upon the world. Father, we are reminded that this is not just something in the United States. This pandemic is all over the world. And God, we pray for those nations and we pray for those people. Multitudes of millions of people that have no medicine. Oh God, walk their dusty roads. Reach out your hand and heal entire villages for your glory. And God, I pray that when these things begin to subside and things, quote, become normal, let it not be normal to what it was before this. Not like the days ago not taking it for granted. God, stir within us again the value of our faith in your kingdom. And we give you the glory. God, just stir a revival through us and in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you today. Life renewed, hope restored. That can be yours today. Give your life to Jesus if you haven't. If you have, draw closer to him. Leave a uh, message on the thread below this social media platform. Let us know what you have need of. We'll see you next time. God bless you is our prayer.